Hey guys, this is Brad Knight from Dallas Geek, and today we're gonna be doing our- What are we doing? <laughs> today we're gonna be doing our next installment of Know Your Directors. Um, for this video, we're gonna be going over- Michael Bay? He, he's later. We, we, we have to work up to him and there'll probably be drinking involved. Probably? Definitely. Okay. But in the meantime, today we're going to be talking about Ridley Scott. So you better know who that is. <laughs> so disappointed if you. Uh, if you have not heard of Ridley Scott or feel like you have, but you're not sure what movies he's been attached to, uh, he almost is, everything basically. He's the director that was responsible for the fr uh, first Alien movie uh, for the, Gladiator. Well, the only Alien movie. Well. The movie that started the, the Aliens franchise. Yeah, that's say because the sequel was Aliens. Yes. And we all know who directed that. Yeah. Uh, so he did Alien, he did Gladiator, he did um, Black Hawk Down, American Gangster, Blade Runner. Um, Kingdom of Heaven, G.I. Jane, Matchstick Men. Prometheus. So yes, he started the Aliens franchise and he came back to uh, do the first prequel for it. And he executive produced uh, and co-wrote uh, Blade Runner 2049. Yes. So, uh... Which have you seen yet? Uh, going to. It's amazing. So, uh... It's, it's long, though. <laughs> Two hours and 48 minutes, oh my god. Well, um... Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, no, it, there is clearly uh, a lot that he's been responsible for, so it's very obvious that like Russell, we need to... What? Like Russell Crowe's, like, entire career? A good chunk of it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's clear that we need to address him. Yeah. Um, so one of the first things that you will notice about a Ridley Scott movie is that they are usually very slow paced. There's a reason for that. He likes to let every scene breathe, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really work for everybody. Some audience members tend to find his movies boring because they are paced so slowly. And those people are awful human beings. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but in conjunction with that, what about the camera work? Uh, it's pretty fantastic, to be honest with you. Uh, he does a lot of the same shots in a lot of his movies, but that's because he uses the same cinema for the 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 uh, he uses the same cinematographer for a lot of stuff. Him and his cinema photographer are on the same page on just about everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, he is very much like, hey, you and me are going to sit down and we are going to go shot by shot, scene by scene. Um, from what I understand, like the cinema photographer himself and the editor will all be together. Yeah. Running through the film. They're very in sync. He uh, is very hands on with yeah. how his movies turn out. It's very meticulous in planning. Right. Yeah. Um, which is really funny because another thing I think that he's really known for is that he likes to let his actors improvise a lot. Yeah, which doesn't seem like they, those two things should go together, but it kind of does. Like he is the exact opposite of David Fincher. <laughs> yeah, you try to improvise on a David Fincher set and he'll, he'll probably about stab murder you. you. Yeah. Uh, no, Ridley, like, I think the the one example that everybody knows about is Gladiator. Yes. The scene where Russell Crowe's talking about his family and the farm that he lives on and everything like that, like, totally ad-libbed. Where he's like, yeah, just, uh, you know, play around with it, we're just gonna roll, and uh, if we get something, we'll keep it. Um, in Blade Runner, the last scene from the final confrontation with uh, the replicants, uh, that last speech was improvised on the spot and loved it, ran with it. Yep. Um, so he very much trusts his actors to really feel what's going on in the scene and come yep. up with something good and he's not opposed to keeping it over what's in the script, which is a, it's a really good thing in all yep. honesty, knowing that like, hey, there's always something that can be done that's better. It also goes to show just how in tune with his actors he is, that he knows and trusts their abilities right. so well to allow them to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason why other directors tend to want to stick to the uh, script and only the script 
is because a lot of times they just don't trust that what the actor can contribute could possibly be better than what the writers contributed. And the director just feels the writers more rather than trying to get in tune with the actors. Yeah. Uh, so that, that really does speak to uh, him as a director uh, and the level of relationships that he develops. Well, that and the fact that he can get what he gets out of his actors too. Oh yeah. Like that level of trust really builds up in terms of like getting the best performance out of who you're working with. Well, also with that, but going, connecting back to the cinematography, um, he understands not only how to set up the actors in the best possible light and the, from the best possible angles, but how to set up the scene yeah. from the best possible angles so that once the actor is done, he knows how to move the camera away to uh, let it linger and give you more of a feel of the environment mm -hmm. so that you're not just feeling the characters, but you're uh, having a tangible connection with the world that he created. Even if at the moment that world is just understanding uh, a single room or a single block on a street. Um, so he, he, he marries those two aspects of filming uh, perfectly together. Yeah, no, totally. He's he's very good at making you feel like you're in the movie. Yes. Um, and... Oh yeah, um... As for the aesthetics for his movies, uh, Ridley Scott has been involved in quite a few genres of movies, but one of the things yeah. that all of his movies tend to have in common is they have a very soft contrast to their aesthetics so that the colors tend to blend together more, whether they are a little bit on the uh, more vivid side, a little bit on the duller side, it all just kind of blends together because you don't have that harsh contrast between shadows and light. It all just kind of goes together and makes everything just, it, it requires you to feel the scene more than just have it obviously slapping you in the face. Right. So, yeah. and that yeah. really ties into like a lot of his movies that are heavier in action, the action scenes are very, very, very chaotic. Yeah. Black Hawk Down, uh, Gladiator, Robin Hood, Kingdom of Heaven. Oh yeah, There's definitely a lot Kingdom of going Heaven. On. Kingdom of Heaven and Black Hawk Down are probably the two best examples of that. Yeah, he very much knows how to capture the chaos of what's going on um, and make it feel as though you have no idea what's going on. But at the same time, he never lets you as the audience member lose sight of what right. the main focus of the scene should be. Right. While it will feel very chaotic, you will still be able to focus on the main character, on the main point of action, and not get lost in the chaos. He, he it, it goes back to how much control over the scene right. he's able to exert. Right. Um, anything else? No, I think I think we, we tackled Ridley pretty well there. Yeah. Um, any genre the guy can make a masterpiece out of. So, and the light just went out. Yeah, hey, look at that. Fantastic. Yeah, I just charged that one too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good job. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in the comments below, please let us know what has been your favorite Ridley Scott movie. Um, Matchstick Man? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely let us know what's been your favorite Ridley Scott movie, and yeah, we, we'd love to hear from you. You, you sound so confident. I, Do you really want to hear from them? Be, I mean, be honest. I mean, most of the time, yeah. It's just you and me talking. That's a lot. <laughs> oh, hey. So, uh, with that, this is Brad and Mike from Dallas Geek saying, see ya. <laughs>